And then a few weeks later, I had a chance encounter with a man that I had actually known over, over in Rwanda. He was in the States when the uh, genocide had started. He was going to school. And at that point in time, he didn't know what was going on with his family. He didn't know if his wife was alive. He didn't know if his children were alive. Yet there was this peace about him, this incredible peace. And I went to a church service that he was at, and I saw this man, again, in this state I could not even fathom. And he was up there and he was interacting with these little kids. Generosity. This man was giving. I like joy. That joy that I knew of the people of Rwanda. So I ended up on July 13th, my brother's birthday, in the psychiatric ward of GNGH Hospital here in Niagara Falls, really desperately trying to end my own life, coming from a place of, of despair, not, not feeling like I could uh, find any kind of peace or a way to orient my life in the world anymore. And um, I had all kinds of love and support at that time. I had my uncle Robin who was there every day with me, my mother who was there every day as well, all kinds of friends and family who had come to support me at that time. And he reached out towards me with his hand and he came over and he took me by the hand and he escorted me up two steps onto the cabaret floor under the spotlight. He took me in his arms in the classic tango position. I was melting. <laughs> and then he looked down and he said, the leg, up. So up went the leg and Cecilia did her thing with the iPhone. And those of, those of you who may be my Facebook friends have already seen and liberally commented on the photograph. It wasn't, it was a photo op. But it was so much fun. It was one of those lovely opportunities, one of those lovely moments that kind of define a vacation. And it was all wonderful. I ended up going there and getting a secretarial position with the first man I interviewed with, who was named Art Smart. <laughs> they called me and said, I have an interview with you, for you, with Art Smart. I said, you're joking. Really? <laughs> no, that is his name. Don't make fun of it. That is his name. So, 16 years at Eastman Kodak Company. How do you do it? How do you kill a cow nicely? There's no nice way to kill a cow. You know, so, <clears throat> start thinking about, you know, this person that's killing the cows. Right? And, and they come in there and they have a job to do that they do day after day after day. They're killing a cow and then killing another one and killing another one. And they do it without even thinking about it. Right, and they have like it's like they have a job to do. They have a family to feed, you know. They got bills to pay, so they just do it over and over day, every every day without thinking about it. Right, and then one day, one of the cows will look them in the eye, and they'll see that that cow has a personality, and they see that the cow is actually a living creature, and they've never seen that before. And all the time they did that, they never seen it, and they decide in that moment that. They don't want to do it anymore. They don't want to kill cows anymore. They just can't do it. 